In this video, we're gonna build out the logic, the actions in our action flow editor for this onboarding page. In the last video, we built out the widget tree and applied all the styling, so we're now ready for our business logic. So what are we gonna need? Well, we're gonna wanna add a profile picture here. So the user has to click on this and upload a profile picture. They're gonna need to add their name in. They'll be able to click here to add their birthday. And then when they click this button, all of this data will be written to their user document. That is, it'll be stored in our database and then we'll navigate the user to the tasks. Okay, so let's build this. Let's start with this button up here. now. You might think that you wanna apply this logic to this tiny button right here, but when you're designing user interactions, you want them to be generous and forgiving. And as a general principle, you want it to be on the highest widget or the largest widget that's still logical. What does that mean? Well, if we go up through this widget tree, we see we've got this icon button, then we've got the container, then we've got this stack, and the next parent up is this column. So of course, it wouldn't be logical. It wouldn't make any sense to to have this be triggered on here because then you couldn't click anything else. But if you go down to our stack right here, well, this makes sense. This is a generous forgiving tap target. It's nice and large, so they could click anywhere in here and it'll still trigger that action. And that's what we want. So let's come over to our second tab so we can access our action flow editor and we want to add an action. Now, if you don't know what an action is called, you can search our documentation or of course do a quick Google search. But often if you just search for a logic name, it will show up. So maybe we want to look for upload something. And we've got this upload data. So we've got upload or save media and a file. Well, we want media because we want a photo. And then we're directed to select an upload type. Well, we're uploading it to Firebase, so we select that. Then we can check, select the media source, so where this is coming from, and we wanna allow our users to either take a picture or add it from a picture they've already taken. We're only allowing photos right here. Here, you can resize the image. This is helpful if you wanna cut down on storage costs in Firebase storage, and if you know it's only ever gonna be this big, so for us, 68 pixels, so we can just set that here. If you set only one dimension, it'll keep the aspect ratio of the image image. Next, you can set the image quality. We'll just leave it like that. And the last thing we'll change is the name. This is so we can reference it later in the action flow editor and it's semantic. It makes sense. All right, beautiful. Okay, so we've marked this for uploading, but now we have to actually upload it. So let's open this up right here and add in another action. It's going to be in our backend database and our Firestore, and we want to update a document because we're adding this to a user collection. We're not just adding this to a general storage bucket, but we want it tied to that user. So we're gonna update a document, and then we have to set a reference. We have to tell Flutterflow which document is it that we wanna update? Well, of course, it's the document of the user. So where is that? Well, that's under authenticated user right here, and you can see we've got a user reference. Beautiful, let's confirm that. And now we've got all of those fields that we can update. Well, we only wanna update one right here, and it's our photo URL. And where is it coming from? It's coming from an uploaded photo or video. That is the one that we uploaded right up here. Okay, great, this is done. But we don't wanna just upload it, we wanna display it. Because you always wanna be indicating to your user the system status, like what's going on with your app. And if we show the photo, they'll know that it uploaded successfully. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we wanna come into our container right here, scroll down to background image and twirl it open. We want it from a network image, we can come into the path here and then select the widget state of the uploaded file URL, beautiful. Next, we can set our name right here and we just want to change a few things. We don't want it to autofocus because the user will normally click on this top thing first. So we can turn that off. We can show a clear field icon, give it a 24. Then we want to set our keyboard type to name and that's it for our name. Next, we can come over to our birthday right here. And for this, we want to come over and add an action that will be a date picker action. 
What's gonna happen when the user clicks on this is that a date picker will pop up and they'll be able to select a date. And the date that the user selected will be stored in the state of this widget. We're only gonna do a few things. We're gonna allow a past date to be selected and disallow a future date because most people were born in the past and that's it. All right, almost done. Finally, we come down to our complete profile. And remember, we want two things here. We wanna update our user account with the data they've added in and then navigate the user. So let's open this up because we have two actions. We want to add one action and we want to update a document. We're not creating a new one, but we're updating that user account. We've already seen how to add the reference to that user. So it's in this authenticated user, confirm. And now we just need to set the fields. Well, what fields do we need to set? Well, we've already uploaded our image. So we just need to add in the name, the display name. And so that's coming from our widget widget, name widget right here, and then our birthday. But we don't have a birthday field. But that's okay. This is part of the power of Flutterflow is that it's flexible. So we can add things in after we've set them up originally. So let's just add in a birthday field right here. And we want it to be of type date time and accept. Now we can go back and open this up to give us more room. And now we can select our birthday and add it from our widget state. Remember, it's stored in our widget state. Date picked, beautiful. Let's close that up. And this is done. Now we just need to navigate the user to our tasks page. And we wanna disallow back navigation so they can't go back to that profile. Set up page and we're done. We're ready to test. Let's do it. All right, let's sign up an email. And let's add a profile image and our name and set our birthday and complete our profile. Well, it looks like it works, but let's check our Firestore. Awesome. There it is. And if we go into edit here, we can see the URL of that image that we uploaded. Beautiful. And that's how to set up the logic on our onboarding page.